Hi, welcome to the Cinema 4D Lite tutorial. First thing we want to do is show you what the final shot would look like. So we uh, are going to go over to here and we're going to take a look and we're going to hit play. You see we have this first shot that's uh, a shot of a camera pulling back and we're tracking in this girder system up here. All the scaffolding and the logo and the monitors. A couple filler shots here and now we got a big motion graphics shot right here where the board flies up. We got some additional motion graphics in both 3D and 2D. And then it flies back to the feet and we finish our shot. So this footage uh, was donated to us by the Bandito Brothers from Danny Wade's documentary Waiting for Lightning and we want to thank those guys for allowing us to play with it. And if you look at our sequence here inside of Premiere, what we've done is we've gone through a bunch of shots, probably about 50 shots, and we found the right sequence that we wanted to use to make up this shot. So this right here is shot one, and you can see the original footage doesn't have any of that scaffolding in it. Uh, we drop in, and this is all running in slow motion with its original frame rate. As soon as we hit this shot here, we're now flying back to real time. He comes by, we go through these two filler shots, and then up to frame to up to shot three. And in shot three, you could see we did a pause here. This is where we paused the shot. We did our projection map. We did a motion graphic shot and we finish up the shot here. So once this edit was done, we took the sequence into Adobe After Effects and we're able to do that by doing a direct import of the Premiere Pro project. So I'm gonna jump over to Adobe After Effects. Okay, so here we are inside of Adobe After Effects, and the first thing that we need to do is we need to import our Premiere Pro project. So we're going to say File, Import, Adobe Premiere Pro Project. I'm going to choose my project, I'm going to choose the sequence I want to use, and say OK. The sequence right here, Maxon Final Sequence, and you can see as I scrub through the clip, we have our edit now inside of Adobe After Effects and we can begin working on the shots here. So the first shot here, uh, the first thing to notice is that the colors are really washed out. These clips are red R3D raw files which need to have their color set in the interpret footage dialog. So I'm going to select the clip right here and I'm going to click interpret footage and in the bottom right here it says more options. So we check more options and we're going to, uh, we could go through here and we could choose a frame that we want to color correct Go over here, let's pull the uh, floating point lookup table down. You can see how it starts revealing more detail in the sky. We have a lot of range in this uh, file here. Um, I could bring exposure down a little bit more. I could pull contrast up. I could give it a little bit of added saturation. And maybe we go in and adjust the curves, give it a little bit of a kick on the highlights, crush up blacks a little bit, a little bit higher in the gamma and we have a nice looking image right now. I'm gonna say OK, and you see it just changed the color right here, and it actually looks a little bit more saturated than we really want, and we will deal with that in a few minutes here. Um, the first thing that we have to do, though, is we need to also conform the frame rate. When you're moving files back and forth between 3D and After Effects, it's always best to have an integer frame rate, so we could change this to 24 frames per second, instead of 23.976, and we will say OK. Now the next thing we need to do to fix this color to match the R3D import is we need to be working in a color managed project. So I'm going to go to project settings here, and we're going to pull down to working space sRGB, and we're going to say OK. And notice it just changed my colors back to where it should be. And if we want to maintain even more of a range there, we could actually have our project settings set to 16-bit per channel and that'll give us even more detail in the uh, shot so that when we track this shot the motion tracker will have more information to grab onto. Once we have our shot uh, color corrected and ready to go what we want to do is we want to transcode this to a QuickTime movie. So we're going to just take it, drag and drop it over here and we're going to now render this movie out into a QuickTime movie. So I'm going to say Composition, Add to Render Queue. And we're going to choose a QuickTime codec here that is lossless, such as a PNG movie. So we could say QuickTime PNG, 
can bump this up to 100, it really doesn't matter on the uh, quality setting. Uh, RGB, millions of colors, um, and we will say OK. And we're going to render this out to a file here called shot one transcode and we will say save. We already have one, I'm gonna overwrite it. And we're going to also need to change the size. This comp is really big right now. If we look at this comp, you can see the size right now is 5120 by 2700. And all we really need it to be is about 1080. So we're gonna do that in the output module here. We're going to resize and we're gonna make it 1920 and it's gonna constrain the aspect ratio to 1013. And we're gonna say okay, and we can now hit render. And because this is such a big file and it's transcoding, it's gonna take a while for us to get our final QuickTime movie, but we're just gonna let it here crunch through and when it's done, we will come back and continue on to the next tutorial.